Did you want to be in the intro or not? Hey, come here. You gotta speak up if you want to be a part of it. We're back, the headless YouTuber doing headless planty things with her trusty pug pudge. And today we are doing some more repots. It is not a repot and chat because usually for repot and chats, I literally just sit there not going in with any agenda on what I want to talk about. I just kind of say what's on my mind. But today is kind of a continuation. Today is kind of a continuation of the Q&As that I did in my last week of plant to-dos. I only got to get through maybe a quarter of them. I am not going to be able to answer all of them, but I am going to just kind of pick out a few to talk about while I repot some plants. And that's what today's going to be. I originally wanted to rehab some more plants today because I am literally in a sea of rehab plants underneath me. Uh, some of them are ones that I love very much. But, you know, I am not the perfect plant parent. I don't ever strive to be the perfect plant parent. But I definitely wanted to show more of that on this channel just because, again, I don't want to give the impression that just all my plants are thriving and happy. I have, I would say out of my entire collection, probably about 20... Probably about 20% of them are rehabs. Sorry, I need to make some calls and I will be right back. Sorry, before I was rudely interrupted. So like I was saying, I am not going to be rehabbing plants today just because I don't feel like it. I got maybe three hours of sleep last night. I had pretty bad insomnia and I just woke up feeling a little, what is this? Oh, it's perlite. I thought it was scale. Uh, I woke up feeling like caca and I just don't really have the energy for that right now. Oh, I just don't really have the energy for that right now. So I thought instead of doing some rehabs, which I will maybe do tomorrow instead, I'm going to repot some plants that bring me a lot of happiness. And while I do that, I will answer some Q and A's. Sorry if you think this is boring and if you're not a fan of Q&A questions, but I am able to address a lot of the questions I get on a weekly basis through these videos. So not only do they help the people that follow me, but it also helps me too, just because I am very bad at replying to DMs. I'm so bad at replying to comments. It's just a constant like game of catch up. So anyway, with all that said, I'm going to just show you everything I'm working on right now, just so that I don't interrupt the video and I can just keep doing the Q and A's. So the first one that I'm going to be repotting today is my, please don't fall out, my Alocasia Frydeck. I don't remember the last time I would have shown this in a video. It might have been maybe my December favorites. I, I don't remember, but I think that the last time I would have shown it, it would have been a lot smaller than this because I grew it from a corm and the new leaf that came from the corm was much smaller than this. It was like maybe this tiny, but it has grown a lot and it just has like exceptional variegation. Like truly it is incredible. And this leaf kind of gave me this like, it was very, very yellow at first, but it's kind of faded off into this like dark green color, which is so beautiful and I almost like it more than the white. This one also emerged very yellow. It's showing super white on the viewfinder right now, but it is more on the yellow creamy side, but just like, ugh, it's just beautiful. And it is starting to gain some size relative to like the oldest leaf on this plant. But yeah, in comparison to this, it was like maybe this small. So it's getting there but with growth also comes root growth and this thing is just busting out of here. So it's definitely time. The next one is a philodendron. I tried to do a good mix. So I have two anthuriums, three hoyas and one philodendron, one alocasia. So it kind of got a good mix of everything. So this is the philodendron white princess that I got recently from my friend Carmen. The last leaf is on its way out or is like basically out. But a new leaf is coming in. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see it, if it'll focus. There is a new leaf coming and this plant just has incredible variegation. So I'm kind of excited to see what the new leaf looks like, but 
It is getting a little rooty in here and it is just in a plastic cup and I just feel like this cup is not doing this plant justice. So I wanted to get it into a proper vessel. Jeez Louise, amazing. One of three Hoyas that I'll be working on is this Hoya, Hoya Parasitica. Hoya Parasitica. It, uh, yeah, it gave me this new leaf. This is the leaf that it came with. I got this from my friend Nessa. I think this is probably the stiffest Hoya I've ever seen or touched in real life. Like, these are like, they're so firm. This one is just in perlite and again in another plastic cup and I'm just kind of trying to like get everyone looking a little bit nicer. Um, it is great to use plastic cups like this for propagations and projects and stuff but once it's like in your like display space I, I just prefer to have them in glass vessels or like an actual pot so not that this really needs to be repotted yet because it's not super super rooty. It's more just like it's sitting in my Rudsta and I just kind of want to get it into something a little nicer than this. Because I am terrible with remembering my Hoya names and I still have not labeled my Hoyas, which is something that I might do in another week of plant to do's because I'm just so tired of not knowing the names of my Hoyas. I have to go on Alice's Instagram and search for this plant because I know she posted it and I should be able to find the ID from her. She actually gave me this cutting and I think it was a two leaf cutting when I got it. Oh my gosh, my posture. I'm like so hunched over. Okay, oh, straighten your back, Charmaine. Where is it? Gosh, she has so many photos now. I'm slouching again. I always call this Hoya. No, I don't call it that. See, I don't even remember. I call one of my Hoyas Hoya Valderrama, but I don't even think this starts with the letter V. Who are you? you Stranger in my house. Oh, here. Dun, dun, dun. Hoya sigillatus. I knew you were in Hoya Valderrama. What is that? Oh, it's sap. Okay. Jeez, I'm like on full skill alert today. I've actually never had any pests on my Hoyas. Like they're a lot more pest resistant than my Aeroid. So that's been a one, one good thing about Hoya ownership. But anyway, this is a Hoya sigillatus. It has grown a lot since I've had it. It requires very little care. I am putting it a little bit closer to the grow light because I'd love to see these dark leaves turn a little bit brighter. Yeah, this one is in Lechuza Pond in a super, super algae-ridden vessel. I think I'm not going to put it in a netted pot anymore or a pot with drainage holes. I'm just going to pot it directly into the vessel. Ah, oh, I bent the... I cracked the leaf when I lifted it. Look at that sap. I'm the worst. This is why I shouldn't touch my plants. Okay, I truly don't know what this is. Something says Hoya Jennifer, but I know I don't have a Hoya Jennifer anything. So this is a Hoya something something. I'll throw up the name, of course. I think I got this from my friend Nikki, if I'm remembering correctly. You guys, my friends are all incredible. And when I got into Hoyas, they were all just throwing Hoyas at me and I didn't know where they were coming from and who was giving them to me. They just kept coming my way. So thank you to everyone who has donated to my Hoya collection. I've probably only purchased maybe like five Hoyas and I have definitely way more Hoyas than that. But this one would have been maybe like a two leaf cutting. I think it came with this leaf and this leaf and it's pushed out all of this despite being in the weirdest mix ever. It's literally perlite and moss in a drainage hole pot. So I've had a little container here and then I add water, but it's definitely not a wa enough water to saturate the roots. I'm surprised it's still as firm as it is and as healthy as it is, but it's, yeah, we're, we're definitely overdue to get it into something a little bit more permanent. The last two that I'm rehabbing are anthuriums. This one was doing really, really well and then I just let the substrate dry out completely because it is literally living in a swamp. Like when I tell you guys it's a swamp, it's a nasty, nasty swamp. And I do think that it'll do a lot better in passive hydro. I'll, I'll pretty much be doing pond and perlite for all of these plants, but this one definitely needs it because this moss dries out so freaking fast, especially because it's in a pot with, with drainage. So I'm just kind of ready to baby this thing and see it glow up because it's actually one of my favorite anthuriums. I know you can't really tell what it's gonna look like much, but I got this from my friend Nessa and hers 
looks like some crazy hybrid of like a forget ace of spades pappy i don't know it's just it's beautiful and it's got like the red leaf margins and it's just beautiful i just love this plant so much so i don't know why it's taken so long for me to care for it but i'm seeing some things in here that i'm not liking like this root that i just broke off oh and it's mushy oh that's just completely falling apart good perfect yeah we're gonna have to do some major major rehabbing on this thing and then the last one, of course, one of my pride and joys, my Anthurium Ace of Spades. I got this for my friend Amanda, who is such a dear friend, and she has just helped guided me on my Anthurium journey. And there is a project that I say that we're working on collaboratively because this whole video that I've been working on um, was inspired by her. So I'm gonna call it a collab, even though it's not really a collab. But anyway, she grew it from a stem cutting and was so kind and gifted me one and this has just been like such a joy to have in the house i love seeing it and this sheen is just amazing it's like all the photos that you see of it online yes they are beautiful but i almost feel like it doesn't even do the plant justice as when you have it in person so i understand that this is a very like sought after plant right now it's very expensive and it's funny because i think historically this went into cultivation and there was like no interest in it i think and so they just stopped making it and now it's like super popular and everyone wants it but i honestly cannot imagine this being in cultivation and looking at it and be like eh, i don't want it like what so anyway, I know it's very expensive. It's kind of hard to find these at a reasonable price and I definitely would not own one right now if Amanda hadn't gifted it to me. I don't live in that income bracket and there's just no way that I would be able to afford the market price of them right now. So, so, so grateful to have this. And right now it's just in moss and a little bit of pond and I am going to be switching this to passive hydro as well. So we're gonna work at the table today. I'm not really gonna super walk you through what I'm doing because they're just kind of gonna be straight repots, but we will just get into the questions and hopefully I answer some outstanding questions that I maybe have not covered on this channel yet or things you've been wondering. And let's also keep our fingers crossed that this is not another two hour video. All right, I think I'm gonna start with the Hoyas because that they're just calling to me but you guys can look at these in the background. So beautiful. Let's just get started with this Q&A. If I can find it in my screenshots, it's been so long. So the first question I got is, what is your number one growing medium if you couldn't parfait? Honestly, it would definitely have to be soil. I think because that's kind of like, not my first love, but it was the first substrate that I worked with when I got into this hobby and I just feel really comfortable with it. I've had people tell me that my soil mix is not correct, but I don't really believe in that word correct or right when it comes to this hobby. I feel like everyone just kind of does what they want and what works for them and I don't know. I, I just like, if something works for me, like even if it could be done better, I always accept advice, but it's all in the approach. Like, don't just like come at me and be like, oh, that's wrong. Like, it's supposed to be like this. I'll automatically not listen to you. But you know, I've had people like mention about like how charcoal can change pH and all that stuff. And of course I listen to it, right? Like pretty much everything that I know about plants has been learned through other people. Like I didn't just, I wasn't just born and then suddenly knew everything that I know now about plants, but I've had people tell me that like my soil mix is wrong, but I've had really great success with the mixture that I've been using and I'm comfortable with it and I feel like it's really good for no drainage. So yeah, I would definitely say soil. How do you decide which medium, soil or pond mix you put in which plants and why? I feel like this answer doesn't have sort of like a black and white answer. It really just depends on like sort of how I'm feeling about the plant and just like kind of observing it over how long, like if I notice that it's super thirsty and like the soil is always drying out 
or even going a different direction if it doesn't like sitting in water i'll maybe be like okay maybe pond isn't the right thing maybe we do soil but it's like once you kind of get to know a certain genus of plants like i feel way more confident with alocasias now than i ever have in the past so like for alocasias for example it's like i am comfortable with them enough now that i know that i would opt for no drainage and i've had really good luck using both soil and like leka or pawn and so i just kind of choose like if i have more pawn at the time then i'll use pawn or if i have more soil then i'll use soil but it really just you just have to kind of just take the time to get to know your plants i did mention this in my no drainage video there's like a good amount of observing that you need to do like when you first get a plant notice its feeding habits like its watering habits how it reacts to being dry, how it reacts to being really wet. I feel like I have been on this journey with my begonia whitei for like a year. And I had this really, really big begonia and it was like so like bushy and amazing when I took it home from the nursery. And it was like the second I took it home, <laughs> and it was almost like the second I took it home, it just like hated me. And so we were sort of like in a love-hate relationship for a little bit, but i babied it i put it in the tent i put it in the exo i put it on the shelf i just decided like i was just trying to figure out like what it liked most yeah after a year i just realized it likes no drainage it does not like to dry out it can tolerate pretty much any kind of humidity as long as you are like regular with the waterings meaning like on a strict schedule it's yeah it's just kind of going back and forth not being afraid to like fail not fail i don't like to use that word but like you know you have to like encounter some losses in this hobby it can't always be good or else you're not really learning so yeah that's kind of how i make my decisions unfortunately i wish it was as easy as just having like a flow chart and being like if it's this then do this but you know we all have different environments we all have different preferences on how we like to grow our plants we all use different fertilizers we all have different substrate mixes and it just really depends. So I guess my only advice is like take the time to get to know your plant and just really pay attention to those things that I mentioned and you should be able to make as good of a decision as you can. It might not be the right decision the first time but that's part of the learning process and the second time around then you'll get it and it feels really good. So yeah, that is my answer to that. I. Oh, hate working with moss on Hoya roots. It is a nightmare. Pond, how do you really feel? I can manage Leka with no drainage, but with Pond, there's root rot. You know, I've had really, really good luck with Pond. Um, I have had some plants rot in Pond, but a lot of it is because of like irregular watering and letting it go too long without water. And then you just like hit it with a bunch of water and it drowns it. But I really, really love Pond. I've mentioned this before but i do prefer homemade pond over the lechuza pond brand because homemade pond is a little bit coarser adding perlite to pond has been such a game changer for me not only does the pond last a lot longer but it just lightens it so much it's a lot easier to repot and sort of get out of the substrate these roots look so like they're so what are these <laughs> I don't even know if these are good roots. They're like so thin. They look like they're dead. Actually, I think they are dead. I'm just gonna chop this off. They're like, I don't know if you can see, they're like little hairs and they're just completely like fried. Okay, so yeah, I, I do like pawn. I do think there is a bit of a learning curve. I did find it a little bit more challenging to work with than Leka. I realized how quickly pond dries out and so for some of my plants that I converted it was like a lot of them dried out a lot faster than I had anticipated and some roots died but I do like it like I feel like now that I'm used to it and now that I have realized that adding perlite has been super helpful um yeah I think it's a great substrate but I do think that it's a very heavy substrate and you just have to be careful when it's a little bit too heavy in a no drainage pot if you can mix like very coarse perlite into it it you'll have a lot better of an experience i think how is the house hunt so we're actually not actively house hunting not just because this market is crazy but it's just we're just not we're just not ready 
financially we're not ready. I, I don't know, it's just we've kind of put that on hold for a long time. I think pretty much ever since I left my nine to five, we just kind of took that off of the table. And if you know sort of like the cost of living here in Vancouver, it's crazy. Like if you're not making a really good income right now as a new um, homeowner, it's very, very difficult to buy a house. So we've put that on hold, but I have been contemplating the idea of moving. As much as I love the space that I'm in and people might think I'm crazy for wanting to move, I'm kind of ready for like a fresh start somewhere else. Even if it's like not as nice as our place now, I just feel like I need like new energy and I need to like be in a neighborhood that has more trees, that is just closer to nature in general and most importantly in a neighborhood where I don't live with Karens. I said it. Here are my vessels of choice for these Hoyas. I know this one is kind of strange but in my Redsta they're all sort of like the same height and so I kind of wanted to get some height difference in there and because this stem is so long with the roots it kind of just makes sense and I can just kind of push it in like that and pot it that way and then that way yeah again I can kind of stagger them in the shelf and they're not all just kind of sitting on one layer. But then these dessert cups that I got from the dollar store are going to work perfectly for these root systems on the other two. So yeah, anyway, the house hunt is definitely on hold, not even thinking about it right now. Yeah, like I mentioned, I am contemplating the idea of moving. Our, well, we're on month to month right now, but our lease is like set to renew, I think in August or September. So if my husband is on board, which he kind of seems like he is, he's just worried that we're not gonna find like a nice place. I think we might end up moving a little bit more northeast. It's a city called Coquitlam or Port Coquitlam. My in-laws live there and it would just be really nice to be closer to them. And I just love that there's like hiking trails out there. There's like nice little creeks and rivers and just places that I can go with Pudge to kind of like feel like I'm in nature without needing to go too far from home. And that's sort of like what I wanted when I moved to British Columbia. I kind of imagined that would that was like the life that I was gonna live, like in the trees or in the mountains or something. But you know, we're living on a little, uh, what is it called? Yeah, I'm living on a peninsula and it's kind of impossible to get in and out of here on the bridge during rush hour. And sometimes I just feel really claustrophobic. I just, I'm not a huge fan of the people in the neighborhood just in terms of like, prioritizing kids over dogs. And I know that sounds crazy, but all that I really ask for is for people to just show some respect to dog owners who don't have kids. Like for a lot of people in this neighborhood, our dogs are our kids. And I just don't like that they make us feel like inferior to them because I guess our world is supposed to revolve around their kids or something. Don't get me wrong, I love kids. I you know my husband and i decided that we do want kids of our own or a kid but i also don't feel like i should bend over backward just to accommodate your child aka making sure my dog doesn't pee anywhere near like 50 feet of the playground that has been like a legitimate concern i talked about like a big kind of spat i got into with some of the parents in this neighborhood over kids like chalking up the park area. I'll have to remember which video that was, but you can listen to it there. But ever since then, I've just been kind of like, ew, nope, nope, nope. These are not my kind of people and I don't like it. Oh, I forgot to put Michael on that one. So yeah, I just, I would rather either be in a place that's more private or just somewhere with people that don't hate dogs, <laughs> which is kind of strange because like this area is all like pet friendly, housing and stuff and so it's just kind of weird that so many people like hate on dogs and i think you guys know by now that pudge is like my life so i do not appreciate the hate that dogs get in this neighborhood especially when it's like a handful of irresponsible dog owners that make it look so bad for the rest of us i go on a regular path with pudge when I take him out every day because I avoid everyone that has their own front lawn and I only go on like public trails or like public paths because I don't want Pudge peeing and in someone's yard. 
I think just because for me personally, it's not like I would get super angry, but if I had a house with a lawn or a yard, I wouldn't love if people left dog poop on there or peed on my flowers, you know? So I get it, like, and I try to be respectful of that. I just don't feel like it's reciprocated or whatever. So anyway, that's enough of me rambling. So yeah, um, house hunt is not currently happening, but we are thinking about maybe moving at the end of the year. Which plant do you hoard multiples of? Oh my gosh, for sure, Gloriosum. And I used to hoard forgetty eyes until a lot of them died. Uh, obviously, you guys know maybe by now that I'm hoarding Philodendron Soderoys and Philodendron Majestics. I am just trying to have one exo filled with them. I don't know why I want to see this through so badly, but that is my my goal for this year. So yeah, those are the ones that I I hoard. I just love them so much and they're really fun to grow. So I used to hoard Milano's and I think I might have a photo still of when I had so many of them, but I just, yeah, they all grew really quickly. I didn't have the greenhouse space that I do now, so it was a little bit hard to care for them, so I ended up having to part with a few. Next question is, do you have any more ghost stories? I do, but I'm gonna save it for October, even though everyone hated, not everyone, but it's like my worst performing video is my paranormal story time, which I loved filming, I loved editing, I enjoyed every part of that video, but no one watched it. You know, and that's just, that's just life. But yeah, I would like to save it for Halloween for the people that do like scary stories. But yeah, I'll have to save that. Oh, this is not gonna be fun to get into. What's the most you spent on a plant? Oh my gosh. I don't remember which video I told this story in, but I spent $800 on a Thai constellation. It was a massive, massive specimen. I won it in an auction and it was beautiful, but I did not know that it was not being well taken care of during the days after it was chopped and being put up for auction in those three days. So it was delivered to me with thrips and root rot and um, it was sold to me as a rooted cutting. So there are actually two of them, $800 each, one for me, one for a friend, and we lost both of them. I do have one single piece left of my friend's tie, but other than that, it is absolutely dead and gone in the afterlife. So yeah, $800, never again. But I honestly feel like I had to learn that lesson because it was sort of a moment where I was like, what in the heck am I doing? And I really, really wanted a tie around that time. And it was kind of impossible to find any ties that size. And this is when I first moved into this space and I just had the, like, I just had it in my mind where I was gonna put it. It was gonna be in the corner of my bedroom. It was gonna be like the centerpiece. And I just needed it. I needed it more than air. It was like the most beautifully variegated, like sectoral variegation. And again, huge, it was big. But yeah, it just was not a good cutting and I don't really wanna get into the interaction with the seller because although she is nice, I just feel a little bit, I'm still a little bit salty if she can't tell by now. And I'm only salty because she didn't really offer any resolve until like a year later. So yeah, I'll never do that again because for $800, do you know how much I could have imported? It's a lot of freaking plants. A lot. That would have been so much, like I could have gotten so many plants at the Equigenera show. I am kind of nervous to buy anything from Equigenera again because as you saw in my rehab video, my philodendron um, drubrosinctum platinum is not doing great, but I'm probably still gonna buy something. Okay, so the Hoyas are done and I'm gonna just kind of let them chill before I add some water, but now we can move on to Let's do, let's do this one. If Pudge was a plant, which one would he be? You know, that's a solid question. Okay, so Pudge is, if I had to describe Pudge, he's very loyal. He is so goofy. He's very loving. I would say he's easy to care for. 
not in terms of like his allergy situation but generally he's just such a good dog and i just i kind of wish that people could take more of a peek into what he's like like on a normal basis because when people come over he's just so amped and hyped and he just runs circles around them and he's just kind of a crazy dog but at home he is so chill you guys he just like sleeps and just hangs out all day or just wants to be with me all day and it's just so precious but you know as soon as like i get dressed for youtube or like the camera turns on he just gets so amped up like he just starts running in circles he wants to follow me he wants to know where we're filming and then he gets all panty and breathy and he, i just feel like i haven't been able to capture him just being like pudge how he is just normally so with all of that said i would say that ooh, he would probably be i don't know you guys i don't know how about how about you guys tell me what plant you think pudge would be just based on what i've said about him and how you like know him uh like through youtube and instagram and stuff i'd be very interested to hear what everyone's thoughts are because i have no clue actually this rhizome is getting so big i can't wait until this thing starts giving me corms oh my gosh i would love to grow another fry deck from corm but it's still a baby although i think it's like thinking about it no are those roots anyway these roots are delicious let's think about the new vessels okay i know that i can fit this white princess into one of these things but what about my fry fry i did end up cleaning this vessel for the fry deck because she deserves it it's a little bit bigger than i was hoping for but just knowing the root patterns of alocasias it's going to outgrow this pretty quickly next question is mars hydro setup update please i do have a video coming out very very soon on my updated tent tour because it's been kind of a while since i've given a proper tour since i've gotten it and i do want to do a dedicated video on it but yeah a lot has changed in there and I used it for rehabs when I first got it and plants that just kind of weren't looking as nice but now I've switched it to both rehab plants and my most prized babies like my Philodendron Glorious is in there, my Philodendron SP Columbia, my Florida Beauty, my Milano Chrysum, um, my Heterocrastodon, my Tordum and now I am definitely going in there every day checking in on everyone and yeah it's just been it's just kind of transformed as a space for me and I just love it so much so I do kind of want to give everybody sort of a peek into what it looks like now because it looks so much different than when I first set it up when Mars Hydro sent it to me and I was thinking about getting a larger tent like a taller one but I just do not have the space. Like it's not gonna fit in my closet anymore if I get a taller one. So maybe when I move, I will get a larger one. I would love to have a plant room that has um, windows. That would be amazing. Wherever we go in this new place, it has to have enough space for a plant room because this is part of my job now and it's a priority, but we also need a bedroom for a potential child, maybe. I'm honestly really nervous about having a baby. Like, I mean, if I am able to have a baby, that is. But I'm just like really, I'm really scared of giving up the lifestyle I have right now. I know it like feels kind of selfish, but also like I don't like the, what is it? Not the stereotype, but like this narrative that like all women or all couples or people in general are supposed to have kids and they should be willing to give up anything for them and I don't know I've just I've never had that mindset and maybe that makes me a bad person but I don't want to give up my plant room I don't want to give up how much time I spend with my plants I don't want to give up my quality time with Pudge I don't want to give up my naps with Pudge like there's just so much that I love about my life that I fully do not take for granted and I know are kind of a luxury in comparison to people that do have children. So I guess I'm just like scared about that. I'm just wanting to make sure I'm fully ready. I want to be in a space that I feel I'd be very comfortable having my plants and a kid. 
you know, I don't want to not be on YouTube anymore because I'm just like a full-time mom. I want to make it work somehow, whether it is like we have to hire help so that I can film during the day or something. So there is like a certain amount of planning that my husband and I are thinking about and sort of like problems or obstacles we're foreseeing with our current lifestyle because uh, I just, I really mean this. There's like just, there's things that I just cannot give up and plants are one of them. I just feel like I wouldn't be myself if I wasn't doing this and I would hate to just kind of have to give it all up to take care of a child or to raise a child. Um, I don't want to stop seeing my plant friends and just doing fun things with my plant friends and yeah. I don't know how we got here, but why did we get here? What was I answering? I was talking about the Mars Hydro setup. Oh yeah, so I was saying all that because in our new place, I would love if I had a plant room that was a little bit larger than the one that I have now with windows and somewhere that I can fit all of my current greenhouses plus a larger tent. The city that we want to move to is a bit cheaper. We might have to like find a rental suite or rental condo that isn't like as luxurious as the one we have now. But honestly, I don't need all of that. Like it's kind of just, I mean, it's nice, but it's not a necessity for me. For me, it's like if I can live functionally and make the space work and make it feel like home, then I'll be happy. But I also don't want to live in a basement suite. So three bedroom and a den is ideal. Long story short, I will be doing a tour on my tent very soon. What is your proudest accomplishment? I would say in the plant hobby, my probably my most proudest accomplishment was hybridizing that Ethereum. And I realized it doesn't take a great amount of skill to do it, but it's just something that I never thought that I would do in the hobby and be able to do it successfully the first time and germinate so many seedlings. I probably have close to 120 seedlings and that was like absolutely unexpected. So that was probably my greatest accomplishment in the hobby. And then I would say outside of the hobby, probably, okay, I have two things that I can think of. One, I have mentioned before, it was me running a full marathon. If you've known me like my whole life, you know that I'm not very active. I did play volleyball in middle school and high school and I did play club. But beyond that, I'm not like the type of person that's like, I'm gonna go to the gym and work out and do yoga every morning. I've just never really been built that way, I don't think. So running that marathon was like, it was crazy. Like I crossed that finish line and I was just like, did I really do that? And it's kind of crazy because the marathon that I ran was a qualifier for the Boston Marathon. So there were people that were really out there that were like trying their freaking hardest and people were literally like peeing just running and peeing because they didn't want to stop and yeah I this woman blasted right through me and just left a trail of pee along the way and I was like oh well that's something you don't see every day and then I would say that my second greatest accomplishment was this one's kind of personal and maybe a little bit TMI but it's probably uh, leaving my ex-boyfriend. Yeah, it was. I was in a very, very toxic but comfortable relationship with my ex. And I don't know, maybe some people might know exactly what that means, but it's like, you know you're in a toxic relationship, but it's become so normal to you that you've just gotten oddly comfortable in it, where you just like kind of tolerate it and think, well, this is my life and this is the, like the cards I've been dealt or whatever, and you just kind of settle. Yeah, I think one of the best things I did for myself was just get out of that. So it was a lot, you know, we had a business together, we had a whole life together. I lived with him. Yeah, it was a very, very, very stressful, painful process to get out of, but I did it and Obviously, no regrets, but in the in the moment, it just felt like my whole world was just like collapsing. It was one of the most stressful things I've done. It was one of the worst times of my life, but we are here. We made it through. I am so freaking tempted to chop this for Alice and Jing. 
because they want one so bad and this stem is getting really long but at the same time there's not a huge root system and I did promise them I wouldn't chop it till it was ready so I think I'm gonna wait a little bit longer I think maybe like after two or three more leaves it should be ready to be chopped because the stem is quite long it's just there's not a ton of roots up here if I chop it I'm gonna hold off on that for now but otherwise everything is looking pretty good I do think it's gonna do a lot better in passive hydro I think I'll have time for two or three more questions um gosh this is really really pushing it well actually it's fine okay so the next question is how do you treat anthuriums for fungal diseases and I am not the best person to ask this question I think um, one thing I've learned in the last few months is kind of deciphering what is the difference between watering issues and fungal things. So if you guys didn't know, anthuriums, I would say, at least in my experience, have not been very tolerant to drying out like my other plants have been. And when they dry out, they, they will show you like, hey, I'm thirsty and it's not even just wilting leaves it's like I'm going to make sure I damage my leaves to make it hurt for you and um, you will feel my wrath so let me just get this potted up and I'll show you actually a really really good example of something fungal and then something that is water related and I was able to figure this out through my friend Amanda like I just told you very fitting that I am potting her plants right now. I hope she approves of me potting this in the choose upon. I am going to be potting the little Mag Lux hybrid in tree fern fiber, but I won't be able to get that until later this week or maybe this weekend when I see Alice because we're going to the Equigenera show. I'm going to be like triple masked that day. If it's anything like the last show, it is a cesspool for COVID transference. I'm actually surprised I didn't get COVID after the last show because I am pretty sure that was not legal. <laughs> the venue and how many people were packed in there. But I also understand that it was a very cold and rainy day. It was freezing that day. My toes were like completely frozen. And yeah, they, the, the venue was trying to get as many people in and out quickly as possible because it was a very, very long line. This one is definitely going to have to be repotted soon, but it is much better than what was it in before. This nasty moss mix. Oh my gosh, that sheen. Look at that. Like, that's like, um, that's amazing. It's so freaking beautiful. I love this plant. Did I put my go? <sighs> I don't have many plants right now with like actual fungal things on the leaves, which I guess is a good thing, but I definitely have these two. So this is my Anthurium forgetii propagation and it is a very, very healthy plant. It didn't have any of these like dry spots like several weeks ago. It's in straight moss and this thing dries out so effing fast and I thought that I had a fungal thing on this plant. This was just all like, it was brown and then it was like bright yellow and it sort of looked like it was like bleeding into the leaf. And I was 100% like, oh, that is so fungal. Like the second I see like a yellow halo, I always just immediately am like, it's fungal. But Amanda was like asking about like the substrate it was in, the care, and then I showed her how thirsty it was. Like you guys, I could bend this like completely in half, like a chalupa, and it was so soft and wilted. She was like, oh my gosh, you need to water it, you crazy girl. And she told, she was like, you know, as soon as you water it, if it hardens off like this, and just goes completely crisp and sort of like seals itself off at the edge then it's a watering thing and it did exactly that it no longer has that yellow halo and it's just completely just kind of sealed back up so if I could crisp all of this off and it would be totally fine but obviously I'm gonna leave it this is not fungal this is not fungal this is truly just a lack of having water in the leaf and just kind of being dramatic whereas something like this that I know had something fungal. So if you look at this leaf, you'll see like these yellow spots, if it'll focus, 
it has these yellow spots sort of sporadically along the plant. There was another leaf on here that just had like yellow spots all over it. And then the same with this one. It's got that yellow halo that I was telling you about, but it doesn't harden off. It just keeps bleeding into the rest of the plant. So truly I should like cut this off. I have been treating with an antifungal. I'm using Phyton 35 right now, but I can still see some like sort of weird fungal parts here. And um, this one is also in soil, but I've done a much better job at keeping this one hydrated than I did my forgetty eye. But yeah, something funky is definitely going on. It's really hard to tell, but there are just like spots along this area here, just very, very light yellow spots. So you wanna look for that rather than something water related. It's usually somewhere around the edges. I find that it's usually in the tip first, but sometimes it'll be along the edge. And yeah, it just gets really crisp. And if you see that your plant's super wilted, I would try doing more regular waterings before you just automatically assume that it's something fungal. I still have like a lot, a lot, a lot of research and studying to do on fungal things on Anthuriums, but I will get into that in another video. The last plant on the agenda today is this problem child. And honestly, I'm a little bit my butt is clenched thinking about what is going on in this substrate, but the only way we're gonna find out is if we unearth it. Okay, uh, while I do this, I will answer maybe two more questions if I can. Favorite Euphoria character slash thoughts on the finale? I know it's been kind of a while since the finale aired. This is the nastiest mix I've ever seen, you poor, poor thing. Yeah, it's been kind of a while since the finale aired, but my favorite character definitely has to be B. Oh, I love I love Jules. I know that like there was a little bit of hate for her for a while because of what she did to Rue, but I feel like I've just always understood her and she is also going through a lot of trauma and hurt and self-discovery herself as playing a teenager in the show and I don't know I've just always felt for her I've just always really loved who she was about I think that she is absolutely beautiful I think she is one of the most beautiful people in Hollywood right now I'm just absolutely obsessed with her can we talk about the mush look at this it's just like falling off of it it's so soft I'm bad bad to the bone okay so i do have to do a little bit of cleanup here i'm surprised i have any root system at all to be honest it's not a great root system but it is something so yeah definitely um jules is my favorite character and then thoughts on the finale i thought it was i thought it was great i loved i loved it it was um very artistic. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was a great, great um, finale. I feel like Rue was like the happiest and the best she's looked since the show started. And I feel like there's like so much that we can kind of assume might happen in the next season. The only thing is I'm just bummed that the next season isn't gonna come out till I'm freaking 35 years old. But I understand Zendaya has a massive role in the next Dune movie coming out, which I loved so, so much. So I am equally as anxious to see that movie come out. So I'm not mad, but I'm just, yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm really missing Euphoria Sundays for sure. So this, Rot has gotten all the way halfway through this stem, but uh, if you watched my rehab video, you know that that's not a death sentence, especially since anthuriums can be propagated this way, vertically along the stem. So as long as I clean it up really, really good, I should be okay. And I am going to run the root under some water and do a little bit of a hydrogen peroxide soak just to clean off any like sort of bacteria that is lingering on here. Cause I just feel like there is. And I need to try and scrape off as much of this sort of dead chunk as possible. I don't know how I let it get so bad. Ew, that just flung at my face. I've definitely neglected this for way too long. I'm so happy it's kind of stuck with me though and just held on last minute until I could rehab it, but I honestly did not realize it was this bad. I have worked with much smaller cuttings though, so 
I'm feeling okay and luckily I do have a little bit of hydrogen peroxide left. Not all hope is lost. It has been about 20 minutes. Oh no, this root is broken. Crap. Ugh, did not think I was gonna have to rehab it this much, but here we are. I'm gonna answer one last question before I get out of here. I do have a very perlite heavy pond mix that I'm going to put it in. And I think I should be able to fit it into just one of these plastic ones. The last question that I'm gonna answer is what has been your biggest struggle in your plant journey? I think that something that I'm constantly trying to work on is just caring for these imported aeroids in general. Like, if you think about it, like, it's super unnatural what we're doing. I've mentioned this before, but it's essentially, you know, we're taking plants that are native to a place across the world from us, from a totally different region, totally different climate, and we are... <laughs> forcing them to live in our houses and I live in Canada so I do have to heavily rely on things like grow lights and and greenhouses and tents and I've seen like really really seasoned people make comments like oh remember when we used to just just grow them wherever or remember when we didn't need these IKEA cabinets I mean, I get it, like these people are from a totally different time of the of the hobby and there's so many sort of new things going around now, like the IKEA greenhouse cabinet that is a lot different. But I think most of us are just trying to make do with what we have and not all of us live in a place where we can just import something and then just stick it on a shelf or stick it in a windowsill and call it a day. There is a lot of acclimatizing that needs to be done. There's a lot of babying that needs to be done to get a plant to live in these very unnatural conditions. So, you know, I have an Ikea cabinet. I've got Exos. I've got a tent. I have, I have the work. And if that makes me less of a plant parent, then I really don't give a shit. So I'm happy with everything that I have to try and make these aeroids grow as best as they can in the conditions that I give it. I would say that like the biggest thing is trying to get my conditions just right through the changing seasons in Canada. We have very drastic season changes, very drastic light changes, temperature changes, and myself not being native to this country is just, yeah, it's been a bit of a learning curve, especially working with all of these plants that I've never owned before before as well as just trying to improve my acclimatization process trying to improve my conditions the best I can it's always a work in progress but I'm never like oh I need to be this 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 and this by this time you know because this person is here and this person does that I just just kind of like stay in my own lane and spend a lot of time with my plants spend a lot of time really observing their habits, really observing how they grow, observing what they like and don't like. And there are people in the community that will try and ruin that experience for you. And the great thing is that you have the power to not let them take that from you. So yeah, all of that in a nutshell, I guess dealing with trying to share this hobby with other people without letting gatekeepy people ruin that for me and then also just constantly studying my plants and the things that I'm doing. That's been kind of like a up and down thing and I've had a lot of plant fails and plants that died, uh, had to make the ultimate sacrifice. But ultimately, I'm feeling pretty good about where I am right now. There's always still so much to learn. Um, I'm really trying to understand Ethereums a lot more than I do now. So yeah, that's about it. But um, this guy's potted and I hope that he transitions well and takes to life in passive hydro. I think anything is better than the situation I had it in before, this tragic, tragic situation. But everyone is potted. I am going to wait a couple hours, maybe like an hour or two before I add water to any of the vessels that I did any chopping with. Pretty much all the ones that were straight repots like my Hoyas and this Philodendron White Princess, I will add some water. But yeah, I'm pretty much done. 
So that's the end of today's q and A. I I feel like I've answered probably half of them now, but I think that there's gonna be opportunity in the future to answer some more of them. A lot of them were personal questions, but I almost feel like I should separate that into a separate q and A for people that don't really give a flying crap about my life, which is understandable, it's a plant channel. Um, so I tried to not answer too many personal questions today and try to address the ones that were plant related, but honestly, most of the questions I got were personal. So I think maybe I'll do a separate q and A. Uh, answering all personal questions and no plant questions but yeah got a lot done today feeling pretty good hopefully I did more good than damage but you really never know until you kind of let them settle for a while but thank you guys for being here and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up because it helps Pudge and I's visibility a lot on YouTube we hit 7.7k this month or this week and yeah, we're just, we're inching our way closer to 10K and it's just, it's gonna be a very great accomplishment. So thank you to everyone who has been here and has constantly been supporting me through this crazy journey. Thank you to all the new subscribers that are here that have subscribed despite me being kind of a hot mess in a lot of recent videos. I truly, 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 truly appreciate all of you. Thank you for all the love and all the comments and all the support on a weekly basis. I will see you in the next one.